and the time that you have released from school uh, to do these is, is very important. Um, to sum it up, I think that teachers need time to do more than teach. They also need time to work professionally together as a group, and, and the time that has been provided this year has been appreciated and well used. Thank you. Um, Nancy Rallis from Pond Cove. Young children need a creative and supportive environment where they feel free to take risks. They need a stimulating and integrated curriculum that respects their individuality. They need time to plan, to experiment, to replan, and to grow. Our faculty feels confident that we provide these things for your children. Teachers' needs are similar. Our own need for a creative and supportive environment for a stimulating and integrated curriculum has been met by an administrator who appreciates our worth and by a staff support system that understands the importance of teamwork. Our only missing piece was the time needed for us to plan, to experiment, to replan, and to grow. On behalf of the hardworking and dedicated elementary staff, I would like to express appreciation to the Board of Education for understanding the importance of this time and for allowing afternoon release days. My example of how we use this time are from my experience as first grade team leader, but could apply to any of our teams. After 3.15, our seven first grade <coughs> teachers participate in approximately 10 different committees. In addition to career ladder responsibilities, parent-teacher conferences, and in-service or university courses. Needless to say, it's very difficult to find a time in which our entire team can gather to share ideas and feelings. Our early release days give us this time. They're usually used to cover the following three areas, curriculum development, individual student needs, and school-wide issues. Curriculum development might involve the planning for an evaluation of a grade level theme. For example, for the next few weeks, first grade students will be studying castles and fairy tales. By the end of January, our team will have spent hours gathering and sharing information and materials, developing activities that appeal to a wide range of abilities and learning styles, planning for an artist in residence, evaluating the project, and making necessary changes for next year. We have spent lunch, after school, weekend, and vacation hours on this three-week project alone. You can see how valuable an early release day is to us. In addition to curricular concerns, teams use release hours to better serve the needs of specific children. The social, emotional, and academic growth of any one child can be affected by a myriad of events, whether they be family, school, or community related. Any child at any given time may need extra support from his or her teacher. Certainly all good teachers offer this support. But in addition, other teachers who are indirectly involved with the child need to be aware so that they too can offer support directly to the child or to the child's teacher. Having time for us to share these ideas, whether they be research-based or experiential, is important for the ultimate well-being of the child. The third area involved in early release days is the discussion of school-wide issues. These issues, usually introduced during our administrative team meeting, cover a variety of topics that concern our entire school committee. For example, during our release time tomorrow, in addition to our classroom theme, first grade agenda items will include the budget, playground cafeteria and bus issues, and substitute teachers. Our staff recognizes that cooperative learning is an invaluable tool in the learning process. Children with diverse backgrounds, experiences, abilities, and learning styles can and should teach each other. We also recognize that cooperative learning is invaluable for teachers' growth. Your gift to us of release days has helped make that growth possible. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. I have um, uh, three more teachers who are going to come and uh, present to you. And uh, I'm wondering whether there's some specific questions you have about the early release uh, days that, that you could state and, and maybe the next three teachers that come up could, could specifically think about answering some of those questions and the turns that they, they have. 
Are, th are there some specific questions that we could begin addressing? Yeah, one that I have is, um, are the teachers K through 12 all required to attend, <laughs> or can some teachers be in their classrooms? Um, how, how does that work? And also, I read the, um, the units that were included from a high school unit and a, an elementary, and they were wonderful. It's, it's the best way of, of teaching. I see that happening a lot K through 3. I don't see many units 4 through 12, and I'm wondering if that's the direction that is going to be taken or why we're not seeing these kinds of units coming out of the other grades. Would you like some other questions, or do you want to address those? Well, I think time? I want to let the next round. Uh, I think some of the answers were in some of the presentations you heard, or at least pieces. But but um, but as the next three faculty come up, maybe they could also address some of those those issues. And so let's put all the questions. Okay. On. I'm not going to answer them now. I'll let faculty right. answer, and then I'll try to sum up. Other questions. Uh, one of our reasons for asking this is we do get calls and concerns about this time and, and I think people want to know how it's being used. I think one of the concerns, especially when um, school begins to be departmentalized, so probably starting at grade 7, let's say 7 through 12 particularly, um, I think Mr. Jackson alluded to if the time is planned carefully, it doesn't really disrupt the school for the children. It often means just two periods that are being, uh, aren't being taught that day. I'm not sure how the, the middle school does that. I don't know if they have shortened time in each period or whether they, they have uh, classes that they just don't have on certain times. But, but the problem is that, that parents say the children aren't having homework the night before in many cases because it's a half day the next day. They're not having homework that night because the teachers possibly period eight is a geometry class and period two is a geometry class class that met in order to keep things even. And so I think a concern of at least upper elementary and or middle school and high school parents is that it really turns out to be a day and a half loss for a two hour time that the teachers have and that that's costly time. Uh, another issue is just the fact that, as one parent said to me, I go to work and I know I'm there. I consider my child's work to be to go to school and every other Wednesday he's not there and I, I can't keep tabs on where he is. He doesn't have homework. He's just out. And I think that's a personal issue that, that the individual families have to deal with although it is a concern of parents. And, and I think we have to weigh, is the value to the teachers stronger than the, the upheaval in the family? I think you also have to weigh, we've talked about before, if we know we have a high percentage of, of two parents and families that are working today, it's very difficult to have the families disrupted and try to find childcare for people in a rather spotty basis once or twice a month or it's 12 or 13 times a year. I think those things have to be taken into consideration. And there was something that was mentioned to Sue Weatherby. Um, She's doing something. And looking at doing some things like that. So I think they're all, it's all part of that program together. And um, it, we do, that's one thing we've had more phone calls on, I guess, in the last six months than anything else, to be honest. Would it be possible to eliminate early release days entirely? and have a longer and remunerated workday for the teachers? Did I make that clear? Mm -hmm. I'm going to let the teachers respond. Oh, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm biting my tongue on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Probably you're not the only one. Um, <laughs> any other questions? I, th I, I concur with one of your the most that I hear concerning, they, they feel that, that it's being utilized well by the teachers and the administrative team, but it still impacts the family. And I still feel that community services could help alleviate this. When we see a, a budget surplus every year, 
there the funds are there. I just think that the community the community services got to be more involved in in helping to um, take care of those children for that time period. Okay. Got that? Any others? I, Any I just other have one question specific to the high school. On one of the sessions, it says that one of the shortened days are going to be used is going to be used for um, preparing for exams. And I just need to clarify: is that because it's exam week and that's what would yeah. normally happen, or? Yeah, that was mid-year exam week, okay. and and traditionally, we've given teachers a lot of time during that week to. Uh, we've encouraged we've encouraged essay exams and moving away from multiple choice questions and we've tried to give people a lot of time to to read long exams I think from the board standpoint at least from my standpoint that we knew that we would hear comments from parents this year about <coughs> pardon me the the program and I think that uh, the programs that have been outlined here for the for the teachers for these days have been very very positive I think for the most part uh, the board has been very supportive of these. I think what we need to see is perhaps what we're talking about tonight are the specifics about what are being covered and uh, perhaps again trying to find some some positive activities for the students on those days when they do have that half a day off whether it's two periods or uh, for the most part most of the parents I know look at it as a, as a half a day so finding some other things for them to do that's constructive is important. And okay. seeing that the whole day doesn't break down that's right. because of those two hours and that it has okay. an effect on the whole week, actually. I well, before we have the next three faculty come up and speak, I mean, this is very good because faculty can now begin to ad address more specifically some of what your concerns are. But let me just say one thing. It's, it is a misnomer to call it a half a day. It's two hours out of a six-hour day, so it's it's a third of a day and and if, and at the high school that comes two periods out of the eight okay marty marty costello from the high school i uh i have been here since 1973 i think longer than most of the teachers here and uh I think these questions about release days have been around since at least uh, that time. Uh, there are problems that do come with it. I don't think there's any way of avoiding them. I, I like the idea of Mr. Holt's idea of perhaps coming up with some kind of activities or something constructive to do with the students. I think there's some real possibilities there that we need to to explore. But I don't, I don't see it as disruptive. I think one of the complaints we have as teachers, more than anything else, as I recall, uh, with maybe 22 years of experience now is that we do not have the time to communicate uh, between one another and among one another very well. We do have faculty meetings, but that's, that's something else again. That's more logistical and uh, uh, it's more uh, principal run, I mean, the structure of the school, what has to be done and so on. We do have department meetings in which we work with our colleagues, but I think working on a one-to-one, -one, working with other teachers in different departments is critical and we sometimes forget that we do not communicate very well in education uh, we tend to end up very much isolated it's a very isolating experience and I think that the these release days have been an answer over the years to that that have helped us to communicate it was mentioned by Paul about going to the to, to the middle school and we will be going to the middle school of history teachers and meeting with the uh, social studies teachers in the middle school there has to be I think not less but more of that type of thing uh, to coordinate our curriculums to meet more with the uh, as we have in the uh, in an earlier uh, release day with the English department and see if we can mesh our, our curriculums and science and math and so on so I think I, I I can speak I think for many teachers in the high school certainly for my department that uh, it is, it is something that, that should continue, if at all possible. We do need them. Uh, that's not discounting the, the, the difficulties. I, I know there are difficulties there. Uh, over the years, partying with kids and all that, I'm not sure there's any absolute solution to it, but I do, I do like the idea uh, at one point, uh, I think, as I recall, we, had, we took kids to various activities. There was a way around it, at least in the middle school. 
Uh, I'm not sure what we could do in the, in the high school, but I would urge the board, if at all possible, to, to continue them because I don't see them as disruptive. Uh, I think the, by and large, the teachers do build it into their, into their lesson plans as far as what the kids will be missing. We don't miss classes that, that much. For example, we do it on a rotating basis in the high school. Tomorrow, I believe it's periods uh, eight and six we will miss. And then next time around, it may be one and two and so on. So you don't ha you're not missing that many classes over the, this period of these, uh, these release days. So I think it balances out, uh, it balances out that way. I think Sue's trying at the middle school to have programs in place. You already have them in place for the elementary school, correct? And I think, the high, like you say, high school is the problem. Maybe some, some strong academic, you know, one-shot deal on those days, you know, a current event or something, you know, that yeah. maybe puts them in the library or, or causes them to read a periodical. Or yeah, I think the, the perception maybe with some parents that it's an easier day or a day off, so to speak, for, for teachers, and I think Mike addressed this, that that's, that's very inaccurate. If anything, uh, speaking for myself and I think others, it's a longer day. It is a longer day. But it, uh, what happens on, what will happen tomorrow, for example, and it may not sound like very much to you, is that we will get a chance to sit down and have lunch with our colleagues, which does not happen. I mean, we work, you know, 20-minute lunches. For instance, I don't even bother eating lunch. It's not worth it to me. And tomorrow, we, before we get into the workshop itself, we will have a chance for 40 minutes, you know, just because of this workshop, to, to meet and sit down and eat with other people. And then from there, go to the middle school or wherever we have to go. So I don't think it's too much to ask. And I think it, uh, by and large, in the long run, it's far more beneficial than, than if we did not have them. Right. Now, will you have something in place for the students that, that maybe is even a little more long range or, or I, I conduct it like any other school day. I mean, I'm missing a couple of classes, and I, uh, I don't think any teacher likes to miss any classes. I mean, there may be a test you want to give and so on. I mean, there is, there's a certain amount of things that you want to get done in a certain period of time, but I think we, we adjust to that over the years and the benefits that come with it, the communications. I mean, to me, that's the key word. It's a question of communications among teachers, which is, and, and as the curriculums change and expand, and they're doing that and getting more intense, I think there, uh, we have to, one way or the other, and the day is long enough now, that we have to uh, communicate with, uh, with other teachers across the board as well as within the departments. I don't really see any other way of doing it. Now, what, what happened today? Do you have a period six or a period eight? A period six is a study, a study hall, yeah. and period eight, I don't have don't a period have, so. <laughs> But But if, when yeah. it is a dismissal on a class that you would normally have, do you make preparations ahead of time for that yeah, you'd class? Have to. And they have yeah, because we have, we have the schedule well in advance as to when we're going to have the workshops, and it's just something you have to get used to. You will not have a class on a certain day. And as I say, you don't keep missing the same classes, so I don't think the teachers see it as, as that much of a problem. Now, that may be glossing over the parents' complaint, because I know that's, I have two children of my own, and I know that can be a problem. But at the same time, I think there is a question of student responsibility that may be forgotten here. I mean, why kids need to be responsible, and I don't, it seems to me it's not too much to ask that they get out at 12 o'clock every five weeks or whatever it is. And to me, that that's, uh, that's something that they ought to be able to handle, and the parents. I've been asked by a parent specifically that, you know, they understand about communication and so forth, but directly for the child in the classroom, what are the benefits? When, when you go back into your classroom and you've had these kinds of meetings, how is your teaching different or why, why is it better for the students? I don't think you can say that after any one day or any one workshop that you're going to come back and necessarily be a better teacher. But I think that we certainly learn more about the students. Uh, we've got a chance, for example, I'm having a whole new set of uh, civics kids in, uh, in the second semester. And I would like to know more about those kids other than just uh, their classroom activities. I'd like to have the time to talk with some guidance people. It's, it's a question to me of time more than anything else. Time is at such a premium that, uh, you know, I like to know as much about kids before they come in in September, for example. Uh, one of my dreams when I was in the middle school was at the end of the year we would have the time to sit down with the teachers and talk about the kids we were going to have, the seventh grade teachers. It just doesn't happen because of the time constraints. So I think it's something that evolves over a period of time. And uh, as I say, it's very isolated. You'd be surprised how well we do not know each other 
in education. And that's perhaps nobody's fault, but I think there, this is one way of helping that out. Thank you. I'd be interested in hearing that addressed from others as well. Thank you very much. Trying to decide whether I want to make any comment about all the ninth graders leaving. I think I want. <laughs> they put in their hour. Um, Phil Jewett from the middle school. I'm not sure if it's an advantage or a disadvantage going last or near the last. Um, I'll make my my comments personal rather than philosophical. I think you heard a lot of the philosophical reasons why it's good to continue the time. Mine's personal. I'm just running out of time. Uh, I have been in the system a long time. I won't say how long. Uh, and I still try to maintain an involvement, which um, partially because I like working with teachers and I enjoy working on curriculum and I, uh, I'm part of the career ladder and I enjoy meeting with parents. There, is a, there are all kinds of pushes. I'm getting pushed and prodded in a lot of directions. Um, there is a direction for the middle school for the teachers to meet with all of the students. For me that means 127 students. Um, for me to meet with those parents in either parent conversations, um, parent conferences, pets, is going to take up a lot of time. It has taken up a lot of time. It will continue to take up a lot of time. Uh, I won't go through the litany of the things that I have to do, but I will tell you at 2.20 when the day is out, um, my personal day continues for another three to four hours. I, I happen to have to deal with kids on a personal nature for discipline, which usually requires an hour or an hour and a half in my room. I. Uh, I, I correct papers at home because I don't have the time in the afternoon anymore because the time that I have in the afternoon is spent either getting ready for the next day, uh, meeting with parents, meeting with teachers, whatever. What you have in the Cape is a unique situation. You've got uh, a town that I think is and has been, um, I'm not sure which jargon East this comes from, but it's on the cutting edge. We tend to be one of the best systems in the state and there's a reason for it. Um, we work hard. I am the we. Uh, the we is me and it's teachers. With all due respect, when the superintendent, the principals, and the curriculum directors, or the assistant principals, or the quasi-administrators who are assigned the responsibility of starting or initiating a curriculum adventure, I'm the guy that's got to make it work. Those of us who have to make it work need to have some time in addition to everything else that we have to do. And you've heard all of the other things that we have to do. My point is this. Uh, for me to start dealing with the excitement that some of the curriculum brings me at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon is not going to generate a lot of interest and it's not going to get very far. Uh, and I want, to, I want to share the excitement that is generated by those people who pass it down to me and ask me to make it work. When I'm saying me, you know that I'm talking about the faculty. Um, the afternoons allow us that opportunity. Yeah, I, I know the dilemmas that are out there. I know the constraints that are placed on parents and homes. I, I like what's happening with community services, and I, I, was, I wasn't aware of why the workshop uh, was going to coincide with the community effort thing in the gym. Now it just sort of clicked when you made that, because uh, we were talking about it today. And I, say, I remember when I passed out that notice to my home room, I said, why are they serving pizza? <laughs> it, it clicked. If we're part of the problem, we darn well ought to be part of the solution, and I think that's what you're seeing. Um, this, this concern has been going on for a long time. One of the things that happened, um, quite a few years ago was that the day was extended to compensate for the number of afternoon workshops uh, so that it could be more palatable to parents in Cape Elizabeth. Um, 
I guess not to drag this out, just, just to let you know, in your deliberations, if, it's not an if or or. I'm, I'm sure that if the workshops are cut out, uh, you know, there will be time found somewhere. I'm just saying to you that the sharing of information, the working on curriculums um, in Cape Elizabeth is, is an important part of our, our day or uh, our work experience. I feel it is. Uh, I've been proud of it for a long time. I know how I would feel if I was to do some of the things that I have to do in curriculum if I end up having to do it in the afternoon on a, on, on a given day. That's what that workshop time to me. Uh, it gives me a time when I'm still fairly fresh. We only lose three periods in the middle school and those flip-flop every other workshop so that um, no one class will lose an extended period of time. I do give homework on the workshop day. I collect homework the next day. Um, and I think most of the teachers can examine their own uh, way of doing things like that and say that if the issue is homework, then we're talking about something a little bit different. If it's not a waste of time because there may or may not be homework. And if you're measuring it that way, I think you're looking at the wrong set of scales. Um, so I will end the way I started. It's a personal issue for me. Uh, I just don't, ha I will not have the time. And there are a lot of people like me um, who are depended upon by those administrators who give us the charge to do it. Uh, I don't think it'll get done as well as it has been because uh, there are a lot of other things that we have to do. Uh, I'll accept any, shall I? So on that specific day, you rotate the classes so it doesn't impact the same classes? That's correct, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we have, tomorrow I will lose periods seven, eight, and nine. What do you teach those periods? History. Do you have a history period another time in the day? I have uh, my three history classes come at the end of the day. All right. Now the next workshop, what happens is, is that we change the schedule so that I have those three history classes in the morning in the next workshop, I lose a couple of my morning classes. What so if you lose, lose a class that's identical to a class that you have? What would you do in the class that you have? Let's say you had a history class in the morning and two uh, in the fair afternoon. Fair question. Um, I slow the presentation down. Whatever I do, I sort of cut it in half. And then the next day when I've got everybody together, I double the, del the delivery. I teach like a talk, I guess. Um, I would sort of try to, over the two-day period, make sure that I've covered everything for all three classes. All three. I could, uh, I could uh, take it over three days. Mm -hmm. So over the course of three days, uh, I would keep those classes in balance. So John. what impact would cutting the class time down so that they got a full day within that time slot? Quite frankly, we've done that, uh, and it's changed depending upon the needs of the, uh, the general direction of what the teachers at that time. Uh, over the past couple of years, we have gone to a mini schedule and taught every class and just abbreviated the periods. Um, this year for, and I'm not sure what the reasons were, I think apparently some teachers felt that over the long run it would be better to have um, lose three classes or two classes, whatever it happens to be, one day and then pick them up and lose another two over the course of a month. Uh, it tends to balance out. I'm not sure which is better. I'm John. talking about the impact on the student more than the impact yeah. on the teacher. I think, I think um, it's six to one, and I, and I don't mean to be vague on it. I just I don't know which is better. I, I find that on, on the half days where we're teaching uh, every class, it's a, it's a quick class. Um, but it, it would be a way of collecting homework and assigning homework so that every student in that grade is still maintaining the same. That's true. Uh, that's true. However, uh, you can also request homework to be passed in for those students who won't see you uh, by having them come in and give you the homework. You know, I, again, I would be careful if the issue was homework. Mm -hmm. I, I, you, know, you, you can certainly work around that. Uh, I think that what, the things that you've heard pertaining to the benefits for the teachers of what's going on in, in Cape Elizabeth, and I, I, again, it's Cape Elizabeth and what's demanded asked of us as teachers. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot that is placed on us as teachers to uh, accomplish. Well, it it's seems like it would be a simple solution. I mean, if, if, the problem, if the problem is a child comes home and says, and the mother says, do you have any homework? And the answer is no, because tomorrow's a shortened day. And then they come home from the shortened day and they say, do you have any homework? No, today was a shortened day. It seems like that would be a, 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 
issue that would be easy for the teachers to deal with, right. which is to be sure to give a full load if, if we're business as usual minus two hours of, if, of instructional time. And so uh, I don't think that's an indictment of the, of the program. It's just a suggestion to the teachers that, that if they want criticism uh, alleviated, perhaps yes, they need to be very careful that, that uh, things go on as usual. I think and I don't think that is a homework issue. I think no, it's just I, a I, I agree vacation. We, Wednesdays are a vacation when, when it's a shortened day, and that's not a good attitude because we have little enough days according to our commissioner of education as it is. We're a I, I think it's important, and I think that teachers, and I, I made the comment, I think we can be part of the solution as well as, as being part of the problem, and I think that would be, it would be easy enough to take care of, uh, because I think the consequences of losing the workshop days for a political reason, whatever it may be, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll have an effect on Cape Elizabeth, I think, on the curriculum methods. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Jewett. One more? Um, Mary Jo Thompson from Pond Cove and the Middle School. Um, I'd like to, as the last person, uh, uh, talk to you about what I see as the value of this early release initiative for the students as much as I can. And uh, also I'd like to speak from a, my unique vantage point as a person um, in, a, in a group that's growing larger, apparently, over, over the last six years. Uh, it is a group that has grown. Um, I'm a, a consulting teacher and a coordinator. And um, my role is similar in that sense to the roles of the language arts coordinators, Sue and Nancy, who work K-8, uh, Gary Record, who's working K-8, also as a consultant. Um, Claire Ruthenberg, who's working K-4 in Gifted and Talented. Uh, Gretchen Berg, as an artist, who's working K-7. And Michael, of course, is, as a coordinator, who's working K-12. And I'm, I'm working K-7 also now. Uh, in our roles as consulting teachers and coordinators, um, we are asked to work as collaborators with classroom teachers, and in sometimes we are the mentors and coaches <coughs> for uh, initiatives in, in curriculum change. Um, this has been an effort that I've experienced um, as a teacher here now for about, I think, I don't know, seven years or so. I can never remember how long I've been here, but uh, the, there's certainly been a shift in this direction toward um, valuing the, import, the curriculum change, uh, looking at our curriculum very thoroughly. And all the stages that you're well aware of uh, from Michael's um, paper of, about the process that we are now undertaking, you, you, you know that as consultants, we are working with teachers at every stage. Um, in the case of our consulting model uh, in Gifted and Talented, as well as working with teachers, we're uh, in doing programs in the classroom and, and in uh, doing training and curriculum inf implementation and long-range planning and so on. Uh, we're also asking one of these consultants to be making individual plans for students for differentiated curriculum uh, for, for uh, these kids. Um, and the success of each of these efforts is completely, um, rely, it relies on having time for us to work with the teachers. In fact, the very idea of a consulting model or a curriculum coordination model is um, built on the idea that there's going to be collaboration. And so the idea of uh, a planning time is, is intrinsic to that model. And I want to say to you that as a consultant, I'm, I'm frustrated because, frankly, it's very hard to have access to teachers. They're very busy. Um, as the team leaders and the other teachers were able to tell you, the demands on their time are, are many. Uh, and yet we've put a lot of our, our eggs in this basket in taking this direction we've been taking in the last few years as far as curriculum change. Um, and I would hate to see us lose one of our major opportunities for working uh, on these efforts as a team. Um, I'd like to talk about what this means for your children in the most tangible way that I can, which would be to show you some examples of the outcomes 
of these planning efforts. And um, so I brought some slides of some programs that have been jointly planned in the, uh, the past couple years. Some planning is done after school, as Nancy said, some on the weekend. Um, more and more we're able to use these, these early release days for this kind of planning. But I must say we have to go beyond it. And I'm going to be the one that all the <laughs> people who are uneasy about this are going to, you can focus on me. I think we should have more of this time. Okay? I said that. Now I'll show <laughs> you the pictures <laughs> and then I'll conclude. <laughs> You want one here? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's some up here. check to see if it reached. Um, I'm going to start with some planning uh, that's done at the grade levels. Um, this particular uh, unit that you see is a kindergarten through third grade unit that uh, was done about four years ago uh, around the theme of children who live by the sea. And you'll see that in order to make this theme a viable one and a real one for the students, one of the efforts was to create a learning environment that depicted the theme. I don't know if you can tell what these children are doing. It's not quite dark enough. But they're um, working in boxes of sand with realia, with uh, items that have been gathered from the beaches in this particular unit with the planning of their teacher. So they were able to do a lot of hands-on work with um, tidal life. And were able to sing about it, read about it, dance about it. <laughs> They, they were working with all parts of their minds with realia. We were able as, as teachers to make plans to use in school resources or, or resources within our faculty. Here, faculty from the middle school are working with the elementary um, students. They're lobstermen. We are also able to make connections with appropriate community resources. For example, here we have the Gulf of Maine Aquarium uh, as a resource with students on the site. Um, and this is another uh, aquarium visit with the Saco Aquarium. We were also able to use parents in the community who had professions that helped us with this unit. In this uh, a subsequent unit, we had, can, is this in focus? I can't tell from how close I am. Is it, yeah, is it good? Fine. Okay. Uh, when we worked on children who, who um, not children who live in this is uh, colonial times in the Constitution three years ago. Again, I want you to see the kind of thinking that teachers have to do when they create a unit. This is not something you buy in a book. They are planning all the activities that are appropriate. And I'm showing sp specific grade levels, but this is something that was happening over kindergarten through third grade. Uh, in this kindergarten, they're working on pen and ink with quill pens and calligraphy and costumes. These are other appropriate activities using realia from the colonial period candle dipping, uh, quilting patterns, weaving, language-related activities that had to do with the theme. We were also, again, able to be, go beyond just classroom experiences or rich for the students to using resources such as the Living History Center at New Orleans. We have third graders who went there. We had them come to our school and, and work with the children in the school so that they could experience life as a uh, a student or a scholar long ago. We were able, in this planning effort, to make an outreach to the parents in a unique way and share some of what we'd learned in an evening with the dances of the colonial period, the costumes of the colonial period, and a community supper. We've had uh, always integral in these, part, in these programs are the use of artists and residents. The artists Efforts are not separate. They're not uh, one-shot deals. Everything is a part of a whole. Uh, here, Gretchen is working with literature that's part of a theme. 
All of this requires contact with the teacher to develop these uh, appropriate kinds of experiences with the artist. And the outcomes are shared with everyone. I'd like to show you two units that developed um, that have, and this is happening more and more in our planning. These have developed and been redeveloped and replanned over several years now, in this case two years, and have become a standard part of the curriculum. So you see the, that the effect is permanent curriculum change, growing out of team planning and collaboration. Uh, two years ago we did a unit called Structures as, part of, as our theme for K-3. to um, Here you see again the classroom-based activities which the teachers in the kindergarten planned. But they were able also in this effort, because of their, their planning time, to create a structure for outside the classroom stations. They created six stations that had to do with all different kinds of structures. And they were able to organize a large group of parent volunteers to help them uh, to teach in these, in these units or in these stations so that the children's experiences were very broad and, and unique and special. The, the stations were wonderful, like this cardboard sculpture station, the 10,000 Lego station, where we had parents help supervise while they were able to build Legos like they, the Legos of their dreams. <laughs> <laughs> we had wonderful parent volunteers help us do newspaper construction. You can build a lot with a rolled newspaper, you'll see here. This is a woodworking station. And a bubble station. <laughs> we also had a soft sculpture area. In this unit, uh, in the third grade also, we started with the theme of structures. In the first year, we really determined to learn about the, the architecture of Portland. The students made three separate visits to Portland, planned in the planning team uh, with visiting consultants from um, the community. The first year, Susie Terrian, who's now on our faculty, uh, consulted with us to plan the architecture unit as a person who had some expertise in that area. We were able to use the museum and Portland landmarks as well. And the students made three uh, trips with different focuses into Portland to discover firsthand the architecture and the architectural heritage. We also worked with our consultant, um, Rachel McAnallen, in math to make an appropriate uh, component that had to do with um, mathematics. Here the students are doing an architectural drafting exercise that she helped us design with the third grade teachers. Our trips finalized, finally were um, culminated with a, a tour of Portland where the children were investigators with their tours that were devised by, with a lot of teacher input and, and consultants from the outside. The kids in groups of five, with a parent helping, discovered Portland on their own and they had to follow their itinerary and do their, their tasks. Here they are making the arches with their arms of the, of the Baxter building and discovering firsthand all the really rich aspects of Portland's architectural heritage. The next year, and they're collecting textures of Portland. There's the farmer's market. The next year, we redesigned the, the unit. Um, we made it richer by adding a historical perspective. We w met with Pat Anderson from Portland Landmarks during one of our Wednesday afternoon release days. And the third grade teachers and Pat devised a way of using the lens of Longfellow's life that that would be the, the, the focal point in the look at the history of Portland and the architecture. We overlaid that historical piece. And we thought of what happened before Longfellow's life, during Longfellow's life, and after Longfellow's life. The children, of course, read about Longfellow, became familiar with his life through biography, read his work, and so on, and visited his home. <coughs> Here we are at the Eastern Cemetery looking for family names of people we discovered in our historical pursuits. Rubbing on the gravestones, we're not allowed to do that anymore. Again, exploring the architecture. And we were able with our artists in residence last year to make a videotape of Portland history from the Falmouth days until the present. And uh, 
You've maybe seen this video. It was done by two third grade classes. Now what's happened is this has become the third grade curriculum in social studies. We'll be embarking on using it this month and it will be continuing till the end of the year. I want to say to parents who are listening and to the board that um, here is evidence of what this means for your children. I think it's pretty convincing. And I'd really hate to see us have to do all of this after school. We're tired after school. And it really makes a difference to have those two hours occasionally to work. Thank you. Mary Jo. Yes. Are you hoping in the next year to, to have slides for us of units like this from Oh yes, um, this time, uh, this year, we're planning our theme for K to five for the first time, our big theme, um, and we'll be working on it. This, <laughs> we're working on it now, and through these Wednesday afternoons, we'll be working on it. The theme is night, and the fourth and fifth grade will be involved in it too. And I know also that the middle school, I'm on the Allied Arts team in the middle school, and they're planning an all-school theme uh, for medieval times for May. So we're. I do see this as an effort, and I see that the, um, the middle school philosophy really adheres to this idea of interdisciplinary approaches, and I think it's forthcoming. And I wanted to just answer the question that um, Mr. Greer had about why they went from having uh, every, you know, on the, on the release days, having every class meet for a short time. It's because of a scheduling problem with the shared faculty between the intermediate unit and the in the middle school. I think that's it. And it, as far as uh, whether students, I mean teachers are dismissed to work in their rooms um, during these planning times, the, the planning times are all structured. And uh, I, I st if there are many offerings, uh, very appropriate offerings, like tomorrow I'm supposed to go to two, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, if a, if a teacher, perchance, does not have an appropriate offering, they make a proposal for an alternative. So that's how it's operating, I think. So is it mandatory? Yes. That they attend something? That yes. they not use it for their own planning time? Not unless the agreed upon thing is for everybody to go to the rooms, but okay. I, we haven't had one of those. <laughs> so. Are there any other questions? Thank, Thank you very much, Mary Jo. Well, I wouldn't have uh, I wouldn't have taken this long, and and uh, and if I didn't think that this was really a very, this is this is not a small issue, and I know other towns uh, that have tried to give their teachers some planning time like this. Uh, some, some towns still do it, other towns have gone away from it because of some of the difficulties um, that have arisen. So, so I know a program like this raises issues. One of the reasons uh, I asked so many people to get involved and to take this much time at this meeting is because this is a very critical issue for all the teaming and all the development we're trying to do. It's it represents, right now, 24 hours. Uh, it's, an in, it's an investment that pays itself back many-fold. The number of, it seeds what goes on after school every single day. Um, there are meetings, whether they're grade level planning or sub-grade level planning or curriculum meetings. And we haven't even, we haven't even talked about the amount of uh, demands on teachers uh, from career ladder and support team work. Uh, teachers feel better about all the afternoon meeting time they're putting in because they know the system has given them some time and acknowledged some of this need. Uh, it really has made possible an awful lot of other work that goes on after school. It represents a small percentage of what goes on, but it, but it's a critical contribution to the effort. Um, what about Peter's question? I think that might fit in right here. His, would a whole day be more beneficial versus a small period of time? Wasn't that your question? A remunerated? Well, let, let me, 
Okay, that's actually one of the things I wanted to uh, get to. Right now there's tremendous <coughs> competition for these early release two hours. The, the, this outline that you saw for using the two hours doesn't reflect uh, how much competition there's been for that time and how many things we've said no, not during early release time. Um, there's time that people in central office might want to have access to speak to, speak to a faculty, whether it be about uh, curriculum or gifted and talented or special ed. And we've pretty much said no, including to me, that, that we have to find that in other ways. Uh, there's been some, some of that time has been presented, uh, building principles have used in doing presentations to the faculty. Some of the time we've had faculty present back about conferences that they've gone to, to get more out of the conferences we send people to. Uh, we've, we have uh, made a lot of people unhappy by saying, no, we're not, we can't give you the early release time. It's committed in a million other ways already. And that's leading to a discussion about uh, how best to organize planning time that might be made available to us. And we're right at the point now of beginning to put together a, a faculty committee on staff development. An awful lot is this, of this has been processed uh, by principals with their leadership teams in the building and then shared and, and processed again at administrative council, which is a meeting of the administrators. And there'll be another piece to that whole working this out, which will be a staff development committee. One of the issues that we're going to look at when we start looking at the calendar for next year is uh, do, we want, do we want to ask for the format of the time to change? Do we want to ask for more time? Do we want to ask for less time? Do, would we rather have hold, more whole days and less early Wednesdays? That's something we're planning on sorting through all over again when we start looking at calendar again in only a couple of months. So that's very much a question on our mind. Okay, and, and I'll keep you up on that debate. I was going to have <coughs> Sue talk about what community services has already put in place, but maybe I should stop because it's I too long. I think we do know there is a program in place, K through eight, and the the, the seven and eight has just, or maybe even the six through eight has just come about in the la last few months. Is that correct? But didn't, I, I was just going to say, didn't that come about as a reduction of other activities for Pond Cove? Didn't you have to make a decision? Was it one or the other or both? I thought, I thought at one point in time we couldn't do both because of a shortage of personnel. What we've really done is expand. We really haven't taken away from the other program. In fact, um, we're offering special activities for all age groups on all early release days, and I'm talking um, K through 8. And what I have done so that folks in the community are aware of these activities, we have just um, touched upon them in our brochure. And um, it just says that these are happening, and we have given them a sampling of what's happening um, in January and February here. In addition to that, we send out um, we circulate one week prior to the workshop um, a flyer and most of these activities do require some sort of pre-registration so that we can predict the numbers. Um, some of these programs do have limited enrollments. Tomorrow is a workshop day and, and what we have scheduled um, for tomorrow is, will be a typical activity day um, for the early release days and tomorrow for instance we're taking 65 first through third graders to Lost Valley skiing. And that will occur immediately after the school day and will run until 6 p.m. tomorrow night. We're offering an open gym and pizza party for the sixth through eighth graders. And that has been done by pre-registration. At this point, we have 30 to 40 youngsters signed up for that. And that will go from actually 12.30 to 2.30. We have an open swim for second through fifth graders tomorrow from immediately after the school day, 1 o'clock until 2.30 in the afternoon. We have ice skating for um, at least 30 to 40 of the extended day children with the 
remaining extended day children being on campus at the high school. So this is just a sampling of what we're doing on the early release days. Um, the number and variety of our activities is often limited though due to staffing and transportation restrictions. Um, we welcome ideas and assistance from people in the community. So if they have suggestions or can volunteer some of their time, we'd love to hear from them. I just want you to know that, that what you're doing it adds to the strength of the program to the point that it, you know, it makes a lot of people who had reservations about it are in favor of it because I think some of those parents of the younger children were really having a problem. And I just want to make sure that these folks know that these programs are out there. Sometimes I don't think the flyers are getting home so that the parents are aware of everything that we are and offering. And put it on Access TV. <coughs> that's, that's a real that's good a place. Idea. I think people do switch on and off there. So what has been your average percent participation generally? Um, I think just adding up the numbers that are enrolled for tomorrow, we're looking at um, 160 children taking advantage of these afternoon programs. And we do have space for more. Um, none of those programs have um, met the maximum numbers that we can accommodate. So um, people aren't taking advantage as much as they might. I think it's just now the words just getting out with the older older students and I think so we do need to perhaps offer a little bit more for the high school population Western maybe age. in the way of open gyms or something like that and I think that's something that we'll definitely address in the near future because they just want a place to go and if we can provide some supervision in the gymnasium we can you know offer numerous activities from street hockey to volleyball to basketball sure. um, and they'll have some space and some supervision. Thank you. Michael? Well, I want to thank again all the faculty who came and presented and, and community services for everything. Thanks for all this time. This, this is an important issue. I just have one comment, and that is that I think teaching is a really unique profession. And if you try and spend day after day and week after week with 23 approximately children a day, keeping them challenged and motivated, you know that after school just doesn't make it for trying to be creative and, and, and come up with all of these wonderful kinds of ideas. So I. I certainly don't think two hours every once in a while is a lot to, to ask to really enrich our students. I, I guess I'd add to that, but I'd also throw out a word of caution, and I think that if I had to have you looked at this for the last six months and seen the nice presentation, that my guess is it may be too early to tell what the effect of, of what you're trying to do is, um, what the effect has been. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt that there's a commitment on the town's part, on the board's part, on the administration's part to give teachers the time to plan. There's been a, a policy from the, from the uh, school board that said curriculum is an important process that needs to be worked on. You've had a, uh, a half year to do that. You've had now a f starting on your full year, a full time to do that. Uh, we've provided the half days or the, the two hour blocks of time to do that. I do think though it's important as tonight has pointed out, that there be some things that you and, your, and the people in the, in the educational area look at, and that is just a review um, to make sure that, that parents, as well as us on the board, are provided an update of what's going on with, with the, the time that the teachers are spending, that it is being spent in a productive manner, uh, that there are programs out there that are worthwhile, and that it is it is time that's spent working towards a specific goal and not being used to um, alleviate time that would be spent after class. Uh, secondly, I think that if we've heard another thing tonight, and that is that there be a consistent delivery of little things like homework and classroom instruction so that we don't have what we're hearing now from parents and is the perception, if not the reality, that there are um, less restrictions or less homework given on those nights when we have a half a day the following day 
uh, or there's less work being presented in the classroom because um, of the half day. I think that is important. And if that, if, if perception is reality, then that's what the parents are hearing, that when a student comes home and the kid walks in the door and says, you know, I've got no homework tonight because it's like a free day tomorrow. That's what the parents hear. And I think it's important that the teachers realize that if they want the time and we're committed to giving them the time and the time is very valuable, then some of these perceptions need to be changed. And the last time I think is, you know, Sue, every year, or at least a couple of years that I've been on the school board now, um, we seem to, Sue's shoulders get broader and broader and we keep putting more and more on Sue. And I think that, you know, this we just were handed tonight, I think it was mailed out to everybody in town today, which is the <coughs> winter spring course catalog, is, is just, I'm amazed that Sue finds the time, the people, the strength, the perseverance to do what we've asked her to do, and yet we've asked her to do even more tonight. And I think it's important as Sue starts to prepare her budget for the 1990 uh, 91 that you make sure that it's a realistic budget, that you get the people that you think you need, so we're not sitting here this time next year saying, uh, we've got some holes that we have to plug and we need some more people, we need some money. But otherwise, I think that uh, the program, as far as I've seen at this point in time, is, is working well, and I guess time will tell. I can certainly understand how the response to the question I posed was that uh, after school hours, people are a little tired and not a good time for creative thinking, perhaps. But I'd just like to leave as a question on the table. Could some of this work be done uh, in the summer or on Saturdays? Cut the number of these, these days down? Or are they indeed a, an integral part of the school year, and do they have to come at regular intervals? You want me to answer that now? <laughs> I just was laying it on the table. If you'd like to answer it, uh, sure. Um, Saturdays, huh? <laughs> uh, Remunerated Saturdays. <laughs> I, my response to that is I won't dare answer that for the faculty. Um, I, I don't want the perception to be that we're doing this because after school time people are so tired that they don't do this sort of thing because they are doing this sort of thing after school. They're doing it in tremendous volume. Okay? This is just a piece uh, that gives people a block of time when they're fresher and in a lot of ways adds structure to all the after school work that they are doing. Okay, so it's not like we're not using the after-school hours. We're, we're using them tremendously. Um, if you remember the curriculum process document that, that we passed, worked on hard last year, and, 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 and you adopted as policy, the majors, the, we, we are looking for the summer to do the major steps in curriculum development. This work that we do during the year is not major curriculum development steps. Uh, we really are saving that for the summer. Developing curriculum is a, is, is a whole separate job. In addition, uh, teaching is a whole separate job. And we've tried to be clear with teachers during the academic year that their highest priority is their teaching in their classrooms. And that's not the time to develop new curriculum. Th that we do some of the planning for what we'll do in the summer. But, but what we really work on now isn't the major pieces of, program, of curriculum development. What we're really working on now is uh, the problems that arise in the classroom, the, the dis following through on the decisions that we've made, either with, uh, either with a theming unit and delivery of program that we want to deliver right now, not what we're going to plan on changing for next year. Um, troubleshooting the changes that we have done, monitoring what we're doing. It's a much more now orientation in terms of worrying about kids, worrying about what we have put in place, how it's doing. Uh, so, so I agree with you that the real major pieces of program development, we got to, we, I want to say for the summer, one of the things I want teachers to hear clearly 
is that now is the time that, that they have the students. That's their highest priority. Now is not the time that I want them to make major efforts in developing new new program. Now is the time to implement what we have now as as absolutely best as we can. And that's the primary focus of this time. So it's following through on some of what we've worked on last summer. Uh, but it's not the time when we really do the major programming steps. Um, but I really think that when we sit down in the next couple of months and start looking at calendar, we're going to look at other ways that we might that, and we'll ask faculty whether there are other ways that we could use this time even more powerfully and perhaps solve some and maybe if we structured it differently, it would solve some problems. Maybe, maybe faculty would like to work a couple of Saturdays. I have no idea. Thank you. There are two people, I believe, in the audience that want to speak. Ms. Dana? Be sure and identify yourself. Okay. My name is Susan Dana, and I have a daughter in first grade at Pond Cove School. And I was just home watching this on TV. And I realize that you have uh, the school board, it sounds as though you've received a lot of calls, a lot of complaints about this half-day session. And I would like to just come as a resident to speak in favor of the half-day session. I think maybe there's a silent majority out there. I don't know how many calls you've gotten with your phones ringing off the hook in favor of this program. But I am very much in favor of, this, of these early release days for various reasons. One reason is um, just for a personal reason, I find that my daughter needs that time at once every, well, once every, uh, what, every other week. Uh, just that time she gets home early, she can, she has time to play with friends, or it just gives her a chance to rejuvenate a little bit, because the day is very intense. She is in first grade, it's 8.30 to 3, it's a long day, it's a big transition for a first grader, so probably parents that have older children might not feel that, but I know that other parents, uh, friends of mine that have children in first grade have voiced the same, um, opinion that they really like these early release days. And also I've noticed that there are brownie meetings on early release days and Cub Scout meetings. I'm thinking more in terms of the Pond Cove parents, but it is a time that's used for meetings for the children outside of, so they can do activities outside of the academic area. Because in the regular school day, it's just very difficult. I've had to take my daughter out of a dance class because she's just so tired at the end of the day. So I find just for her, it's nice for her to have that time. Tomorrow she's going skating with a friend, you know, and it's just, um, it gives her a chance to catch her breath from a very busy, hectic week. But more importantly, I think it's, it's, a, it's a town, we're showing our teachers that we think highly enough of them and we're gonna treat them as professionals and give them this time to meet. It's so difficult teaching, having taught for seven years, I realize this, that to try, if you, in a high school level, if you have 120, 150 students, you collect homework every day, just to try to grade those papers and get those back the next day is an impossible task. And if you're trying to meet with parents and and work on curriculum development, I think that, that giving them this time is, is, is critical. And all we're really giving them at the most is four hours a month. And I noticed that there are two or three months where there's just one early release day. So I, I would like to think that, you know, in a town such as this where we value education so highly that we can treat our teachers as professionals and give them this time to get together for, for planning or grading papers or attending a graduate course at the university or working on a career career ladder or working on curriculum development or just networking, talking maybe with a school psychologist about a particular student that has a problem. Um, and I can see just personally how that benefits my child. I notice once a month in the PCPA newsletter that Barbara Powers writes how a, a short write-up about how the workshop day is used. So I think parents, at least in the Pond Cove level, that have complained about that have not read the newsletter because I know every month I get a feeling as well, gee, this is what they've done this month with their, with their workshop time. And I, I would thank Barbara for doing that because it, it does kind of validate that time as a, as a resident. Also, um, I've heard some complaints that while the, the students aren't given homework on the night of, of workshop days and consequently sometimes the, the Wednesday when they miss the two periods, there's no homework. But I don't really think that the teacher should have to come up here and defend themselves about that. I think, first of all, that's an administration problem. If homework is not being given, that's a policy issue that should be set by the administration. And if there are a few teachers that are not giving homework, then I think it's the administration's responsibility 
to, at a faculty meeting to say, well, this is our policy, homework is going to be given on, on an early release night, um, whatever. So I think that the homework issue is just a, a minor issue that could be solved by some work with the administration. And I think what Sue Weatherby is doing is wonderful with the community services and maybe parents that are concerned about daycare issues, which seems to me a lot of this seems to be a daycare issue as opposed to a professional academic issue, I think then maybe we could deal with it in, in terms of that with Sue Weatherby, maybe provide her with some more funding and maybe get together a, a committee with residents involved, with these parents that have children that are, um, that are being released early and they want activities. Maybe we could just have workshops and try to come up with different ideas to help Sue as far as what we can do with these children in, in the free time. But anyway, I just wanted to say that as a taxpayer, I real, I, I'm very pleased with the schools here and I support the teachers. I think we have a very professional staff and I would hate to see these early release days taken away from the teachers because I really think it's critical to them to just so they know that we are treating them as professionals. So. Thank you very much. Madam Chairman, I'm Rosemary Reed. I'm a parent of an intermediate unit child and a um, middle school child. I'm here representing 14 members of the Middle School Parents Association who met this morning. Um, this issue was one of them that we discussed. It was a two-hour meeting. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, by the way, the other 13 uh, parents are watching this and those who can't watch for one reason or another will be w watching rebroadcast. So it looks like there's only one of us here, but uh, there's more. <laughs> and Sue came back. Um, uh, Thirteen of the members attending our meeting today were non-working parents. One member was a working mother. All of them were female. Two uh, of the people at our meeting today were not opposed to early release days. I'm sorry, I'm so nervous. Twelve were opposed to the point of writing letters. Um, they are not just the people you've already been heard, um, heard from. With all due respect to the teaching profession, of which I'm also a former member, and the parents that were in attendance today and everyone that I've spoken to is most appreciative of the professionalism the team approach, the innovative, the synergy, you know, the value that has been added for our children uh, with everything that's going on. But one of the things that um, the parents discussed was our students lose 24 hours, which is four days. Perhaps it could be considered instead of a two-hour early release that in that two-hour program the children stay in the school and a substitute or a high school student or a volunteer parent or a paid person come in and keep the children in school for those extra two hours, giving the, the parents, uh, excuse me, the teachers the amount of time that they need for their very important work, giving parents the safety of knowing where their children are. The concerns are that on early release days, the bus trips are made at 12.30 and 1.30, and so therefore are not available at 3.30 to return the children home after community service events. Uh, um, you know what I mean. Um, the other concern is, I, I will give you Rosemary Reed's children's schedule tomorrow. Um, my son has a four o'clock basketball practice for the fifth and sixth grade travel team. He gets out at 3.30 because he's an intermediate um, student and yet he's one of four fifth graders on a six, the, the rest of the kids are sixth grade kids who are out of school. That means he gets to come home, have a snack, grab his gear at 3.30 normally and um, I mean excuse me normally he takes all that with him and he stays at the school and he's there for four o'clock practice tomorrow he gets out of school at uh, 1 20 1 30 I have to go get him or he could take the bus he will come to the house then I or someone has to get him back up to the gym at uh, four o'clock for his practice my daughter is uh, trying out for the seventh grade basketball team tomorrow there is a practice at 2 30 um, she will be out of school at 12.20. She will come home with nine other girls 
four of whom I will bring back to the basketball practice. Um, many of uh, those parents are working. I'm also taking into my home tomorrow two other boys whose mother works who can't take any more days off from work or she'll be fired, she's told. Um, those, those are the concerns of the middle school parents that were in attendance at our meeting today. It has been suggested that we take a poll of the middle school parents to see just how serious um, this is, issue is for the 11 through 14 age student because they do not uh, go to community services programs unless they want to. They do not bring home notices unless they want to. I write for the Courier. I write the programs that are in there, so I know they're in there. My daughter doesn't want to go to most of them because that gives her two hours to go to House of Pizza, who loves early release days, <laughs> and um, you know, see her friends. And I think socialization is part of this. Um, what I think that the concern is when you're dealing with middle school um, students and Pond Cove, excuse me, middle school teachers and Pond Cove teachers and high school teachers talking, their early release time starts at different times. So when high school uh, early release gets out at 11.30 and the high school um, discipline team people are meeting with the middle school people, well, they've already been out for an hour earlier. There's only one hour of overlap and if the other option besides keeping our children in school is to have four full days where the teachers are in meeting, the students are in class. If you figure out what the cost would be of having the um, teachers in session on Saturdays for, 20, for uh, four full days compared to the cost of um, substitutes for those days when the teachers could be in formal session. These are some of the suggestions that the Middle School Parents Association had asked me to present to the board this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Well, I think we've run the gamut of, of ideas and, and uh, possibilities, and it isn't an easy situation. Um, I want to thank all the people who came tonight and talked, the teachers particularly, and uh, the parents and the administrators. Uh, I think you've given us what we wanted was information that we could share with parents when they question us. And uh, I think you've given us a lot of strong, concrete ideas of what you do with that time. Um, I think you've expressed very clearly the needs of the teachers for those workshop days. Uh, I think the community service support is invaluable. And I think that is the link that is beginning to make this work. Maybe we de do need a bus coming back to pick them up at 3.30 when the activity ends. I think there's a lot of logistics that needs to be worked out. Uh, I think it can be worked out. I think we've got willing people that are trying to make it work for the families as well as work for the teachers. Uh, I think, I hope that the middle school and the high school has heard the message loud and clear that, that it's not a vacation time uh, school goes on as usual, homework goes on as usual, uh, because a class isn't meeting is, is not a reason for not teaching another class. Um, I'm not sure to what extent that's a problem, but to any extent that that's a problem, I'm sure that the administration can deal with that. Um, I'm not sure that we're here tonight to make a final decision about the, the workshop days. I, I, I really never looked upon it as a, a night that we were going to vote yay or nay whether we're going to keep them. I think we always knew they were important. We wanted to know how important and how they were used. Uh, I think we can continue to think and continue to, uh, to look at this and, uh, and bring it back up at a later time. If, if, uh, I'd like to hope that the administration will work with each other and with Dr. Pelletier and trying to keep these as smooth as they can be. Uh, and I hope they've heard the concerns of, of the parents that, that are being represented tonight from the middle school particularly. I would like to tell Ms. Dana that in all of the calls I've ever received, I have not received a call from an elementary school parent since the community service program has been put in. 
I think there was a real concern that those children had no place to go. I think that has been taken care of. The questions and concerns I hear are that middle school, high school age where you really can't take them and put them in a little box like you can elementary school pupils, although we have to understand that a lot of that responsibility rests with the family and not just the school. So I think we will close this presentation tonight and leave it open-ended. Uh, is there anything else that anyone on the board wants to say before we close this? Okay. Then we'll move on to the next item. And that is the superintendent's report. I'd like to start uh, with the early admissions. Each year at this time, I, I make a report to the board. I'm pleased there are a dozen young people that have been selected for early admissions. Another six or so are waiting. Uh, and I wanted you to get this report, which is confidential for those students because it's extremely sensitive. And it also affords me this opportunity to tell you that uh, I start my rounds uh, of colleges uh, this week. I hope uh, this time to do Dartmouth. I'm doing Dartmouth on Tuesday, and uh, I'll go on Monday. And I hope to do Williams in February, and uh, I'll make reports to you on that. Where else are you planning to go now? Uh, I'm not sure. I've asked the guidance people. I want those two. The guidance people seem to determine or help me determine where best we could go. And I would hope uh, that this year, as it's the second year, uh, I'll see if it's really cost effective. If it makes <coughs> any and uh, that'll give us a five under our belt if I can do three this time. So. Uh, You've done Cornell and Harvard. Harvard. Uh, I'd like to bring to your attention B and C. Madam Chairman, could I take the, because of the length of the evening, could I take those two together? Yes. Right. Uh, first, as you know, we're devoting three days of uh, workshops to team building. And uh, we've had our first one. We have a second one on Tuesday the 25th, at which time uh, for the second time, we're going to spend a great deal of time on space needs and programs. Uh, but I bring uh, this Leadership Academy to you, and uh, let me try to explain what's happening. As you know, the certification of teachers has started some time ago, but the administrators will be starting this next year. And uh, as you know, they've uh, turned all certification back to the locals. In this area, we've developed four areas for recertification of administrators. We're with Portland, Scarborough, Scarborough and South Portland. And uh, we're attempting to collectively uh, do some staff development work because that'll be part of every administrator's certification. This has to be done every fifth year for an administrator. Uh, we have finished the model uh, the model that we plan to use. The meeting is in January for all of the administrators. We'll represent about 60 or 70 administrators in this unit, this region. Now, I bring this to your attention because uh, when the legislature in its wisdom uh, did this, uh, they appropriated $100 per head uh, for the entire process. I don't have to tell you that that isn't going to go a long way with retooling a staff development program for administrators. So I wanted you to know that because uh, I suspect that um, maybe in this budget and, sur and surely in the next one, we will start have planning. We'll have to start uh, raising funds for the recertification of administrators. Uh, as you know, uh, it's $100 for teachers, but we have 130 some teachers. So, and we have a person that coordinates all this. We'll have a coordinator, probably will be a college professor, who will uh, be part of the region. And also, uh, we're going to ask administrators to serve on this board, uh, and uh, probably one from each community, and this should be very time consuming. But I wanted you to be knowledgeable of the whole thing. Daryl, do, do you have any idea what the cost would be? None whatsoever. We, uh, uh, the preliminary, estimates were that we have $10,000 for next year, and we're able to raise that.
But after that, I don't know, because I don't know the numbers that are been coming up each year and what the programs, what programs they select. Uh, we'll have to pay some of these people to be, to monitor. There'll be a number of principals or all of the administrators asked to monitor certain kinds of people or certain kinds of programs. I don't have the slightest idea at this point. But it would be an ongoing academy type thing. Yes, and because every five years people will pop up and have to go through this process. And it's expected it'll take them 18 months to go through. And uh, we'll probably, uh, if this leadership workshop with Portland works, uh, we probably could enlarge that to an extent where people could actually get courses for staff development. There'll be an array of things that people can do to get recertified. Thank you. Thank you. We have a grant. <laughs> <laughs> no, the next one is I'd like to take is uh, you're right the mini grant. I. The reason why I brought this to your attention is I'm so pleased that uh, our high school nurse, Mandy Garmy, uh, wrote the uh, grant and received it, one of 75, or competed with 75, and it's the Masonic Foundation. Uh, we want to thank them for putting up the money, and it'll go to our alcohol abuse program at the high school. And uh, Was that the nature of the proposal? Yes. So uh, I'd like to formally thank the Masonic Foundation, and I hope they continue to uh, put out grants so that we can use them. As you know, uh, there are only two sources of funds except for our own here, and those are funds from the state which amount to about $3,700 that Lyle Kramer does every summer, and this, of course, will add uh, another 1400 I think we skipped item D. Right? Yes, and that's the one I'd like to uh, get to. Over the years, the boards have always indicated that the first and second year teachers come upon them very swiftly. That, you know, it's February and we present them and you don't have an opportunity to, uh, to see who they are and we don't have a large opportunity to watch them for any length of time. There's been a change in the law, and this is for the administrators as well, because I'm going to surprise them tonight. The change in the law was supposed to help us to do that, and we would have till May 15th for first and second year teachers. I, I worked with the attorney as late as six o'clock tonight, only to find that the law does not supersede our contract. So we will have to continue until other negotiations. We'll have to continue to present uh, who we are going to retain as first and second year teachers. The latest would be the March 13th meeting because March 15th is the date of our contract. So we'll be uh, processing this the exact way we have in the past. And, uh, I had told the administrators I had hoped that it would be May 15th, and we all had hoped that for that, but unfortunately it isn't. So what I thought was good news is not good news. Madam Chairman, on item E, yes. I just have one question to ask Daryl, since it has to do with drug and alcohol awareness. You, you, as a member of the community team, I believe you've been approached by the police department to about a DARE program? Right. We met with the police department and uh, we met with the curriculum director and uh, we're on top of that. And uh, what do we, Michael, what was the, the conclusions of our meeting? Still in the process. Still in the process? But it involves fifth and sixth grade. It's a program for fifth and sixth graders, I believe. Correct. We thought it would complement what we're already doing. Okay. And, uh, right now, we're, we're not addressing fifth grade. Well, but we are in sixth grade through um, Quest. Okay. This is a Justice Department program right. that's been around for a while. So. And item F. Now, uh, I'd like to just spend a few minutes on item F. I can find it in my 
I was asked for the paper to uh, to sort of look at the decade, <coughs> and uh, I enjoyed doing that immensely. And I shared it with the administrative council. And I'd like to just point out a couple things, and I realize it's late, Madam Chairman, but. Uh, in 79 and 90, the budget was 3.5 million, and in 89 90, the budget was 8.1 million. At the same time, in 79 80, the student enrollment was 1840, and the student enrollment in 89 90 is 1500, approximately. And the major difference was that the high school at that time enrolled 647 young people in grades 9 through 12 versus our 426 enrollment today. Well, at the present time, our enrollments has changed significantly. We can, however, see that if we look at the decade, I feel we're going to be in the same position. We have three, we have three population studies, and it appears that we're going to be in the same position in 10 years or eight years that we were 10 years ago, with one difference. The high school enrollment will be larger, and there'll have to be a lot of refurbishing because there's space at the high school that was designed for not the kind of program that we're using today, e.g., you know, that large instructional room. Uh, we would certainly benefit if that were two rooms. One of the shortages almost now in the high school is the lack of classroom stations. While there's a great deal of square footage, something like 151,000 square feet, there are very few classrooms for a high school that was designed with a completely different philosophy prior to computers and special education and reading labs and a host of other programs. So it's interesting that if we find ourselves in the same position we were 10 years ago, 10 years from now, the creativity is going to be how can we run the ball through the school uh, without uh, having to build. And that's going to be the big issue. Now, I thought I'd just uh, lay out for you some of the programs that have been added in the decade that have changed the school system. Probably the most significant factor in terms of uh, finances would be the career ladder, uh, which has changed the way certain teachers are paid. However, teacher increases over the years have added significantly to the increase in budget. But I would bring this to your attention. We've added foreign languages in the elementary schools, computer programs that are quite expensive and require additional personnel and equipment. The special education program has grown significantly over 10 years. The addition of a reading lab at the high school, better teacher-student ratios than we had 10 years ago, and large numbers of teaching assistants have been added to the whole program. Another additional cost, which is high value to the community, has been our athletic program. And we presently have approximately 80% of our young people participating in athletics and co-curricular activities. And as we know, that is a very respectable account. I bring this accolade to your attention that was read in the newspaper Apparently in this decade, we have received more state championships than any high school in the state. Uh, the second to us was 27, and I think that was Greeley. Also over this period of time, particularly in the last five years, our community service program has grown significantly, and we can see tonight its value to us. The only programs that I can see that have been cut or reduced in the Cape Elizabeth school system during the past decade has been the removal of life skills programs in the high school, driver education, and Latin. Now, so you can see what we've added in a decade as to what we've cut out. It's a good thing we added to the school day. One of the saddest pictures that I can present to you we always say that. <laughs> One of the saddest pictures that I can say to you is that state aid has been reduced yearly for a decade. And the percentage of state aid in 79, 90, and 80 rather, was 52% of the budget. 
and in 89.90 it was 26.62. As promised. Very quickly on the miscellaneous uh, choice, which is something we've discussed uh, in the larger school systems will probably come about and start a great deal of com competition among schools. College courses will come from the TV hookups that are now in 22 places for our seniors who want to start college early. I think the role of the school principal, director and supervisors uh, will change significantly to the point where I think we're going to start in five years looking at ways to organize the schools administratively. 
Teacher salaries, in spite of the economy, will increase significantly over the next decade because people will realize that there's a real cost-benefit if we're going to compete globally. The principal's role will be the one that will change from instructional leader to procedural technician who works with consensus. And we're starting to see that right now. Uh, as a superintendent for I won't say how many years, uh, more teachers made a presentation on things that are close to policy tonight than you probably would see at any board meeting in most places. And I think this is starting. <coughs> I think the use of textbooks is going to give way because of its vulnerability to selling tactics. And we're going to use series of primary sources, disc, and a host of visual and audio materials. All in all, the, from my point of view, I think it's going to be a great challenge. And I only wish I were 25 years younger to see what it's really all about. Thank you, Dr. Pelletier. We appreciate those. those uh comments about our future and, and our past. We'll move on to the board chairman's report. Um, let's begin with the two school board workshops that we have within the next month. The first is a gifted and talented workshop which will be held on January 25th at 7.30 in the superintendent's conference room upstairs and we would like to invite anyone interested in this topic at all in the public to please join us. This is an open uh, workshop for all interested people. Then on February the 1st at 7.30 in the high school library, we will be having a high school workshop. And um, it's listed here as a work in progress workshop. I, I thought perhaps we might take a moment and it might help Mr. Miles if the board perhaps mentioned some questions that are uh, ideas or issues that they might like to have covered at this workshop. And I'll ask uh, Mrs. Brown to make a note of those, just just so you'll you'll have those. If there are any uh, particular items that that you would find interesting at that workshop, I'm particularly interested in the student records and in grading to uh, see what degree of uniformity there is or there isn't in uh, in this area. Okay. In other words, does one teacher give out all A's and another all C's? teaching the same, essentially the same course. And what information follows a student, uh, you know, through um, his or her life in the high school. Uh, we heard one high school student tonight uh, comment on the fact that uh, he knew very little about students that were coming into him. There simply wasn't time. Uh, I don't, I didn't like hearing that very much, frankly, and I'd like to, you know, pursue that subject uh, a bit more. Any other? Jan? Um, I feel like I have a, a clear understanding of the vision for Pond Cove and where the middle school is heading. I don't have a vision for, uh, or I don't have an understanding of what the vision is for where the high school is heading. And so I, I'd like to know what are Mr. Miles and the, and the faculty's visions and goals of where the high school will be in, in two years, in five years, or however many years they want to tell us. Um, another thing I'd like to find out about, are we moving toward integrated programming like what was described in our packet? And I, I brought that up earlier. Um, are alternatives to leveling being explored that would fully challenge each student? Um, what are the long range plans for that? And, and I guess along with that, just basically what is the game plan for fully challenging every single student no matter where they are. Um, I'm interested in finding out how the subject areas have been improved and upgraded from last year. What are the differences this year um, in, in improvement? Um, and then homework is another thing. I, I, I guess I've heard from some parents that homework is kind of given out unevenly and, and I need to know what, what the policy is uh, at all levels for, for the amount of homework given. Anyone else? Um, there's 
different departments within the high school, and I noticed one of the curriculum guide revision focuses for one of these half days is team building in the high school. I'd like to know what steps have been taken to implement team building and bringing all these departments together towards one common goal. And uh, another thing is, how effective are we in our guidance of these students in either helping them to, to place them where they need to be to get into the colleges they want, and um, how effective our guidance is in dealing with their problems in dealing with everyday schooling. Uh, a few concerns that, that I had. I remember last year we, we, at budget time, we were talking about a writing lab, and I think it was going to be taken care of within the, the, uh, the boundaries of what was already in place, and it did not end up being a budget item. But I, I haven't heard much about the writing lab, and I was just wondering how things are going, and if there is such a thing. Um, <clears throat> the math department, I, I know that there were some plans for change this year and, and I'm excited about hearing about those and then um, I, I'm not sure that this is it's on record but someone had mentioned to me some adults had mentioned to me that there might be a course next year a government course that was a requirement for s student council members and I just wondered what the status of that or just the thinking behind that might be now mr. miles that's a lot of things. <laughs> and I know we don't have <laughs> So we'll, we'll make a list of these and we'll talk about them and, and go as far as we can or, or let you work on it. Sure. But we felt like this might be helpful rather than just to say, you know, come in and get. We, we really didn't want just a report as much as, as we wanted, you know, to be able to, you know, have some concrete questions uh, addressed. So we'll, we'll get with you about which of these can, can be addressed in a one evening workshop and then we'll try to get some publicity out so that, uh, that people will know what specific items would be covered that night. Okay, so those are the two workshops that we have coming up. Um, at this time we need to, uh, oh, I, I just want to comment for a moment that I did get a copy of the 19... 8990 resolutions of the Maine State School Board Association. I think all of you have those in your packet. And had we had a shortened meeting, I would have gone over the nine new resolutions. I'm not going to do that. If anyone is interested in the new standing resolutions of the Maine State School Board Association, I'd be happy to give those to you. I do have a copy of those. Um, all of which, for the most part, we have addressed in some way or other in our own school board, our, our own local school board. At this time, we need a school board contact person. This is a person who will keep the board informed about legislative issues in the state and main, maintain contact with our legislators, uh, uh, the ones who represent our school district. And uh, whoever does this will be getting a lot of mail because they get all the legislative bulletins. And I think Mr. Holt has served us this last year in that capacity. And I don't know if he wants to continue or whether someone else would like to have that responsibility for the coming year. I'd be happy to pass the baton on to anybody who would feel that they get an under uh, delivery of mail in their life. And they'd like to have some more things to open when they walk in the door at night. So I, Is that of interest of anyone on the board to, to be keeping up with the legislation? A lot. I must say a lot of it is repetitious. I mean, we do get a, a, a mailing from the Maine State School Board Association. and you wind up getting double of all that stuff. And then there's a few things that come along. It, was, it wasn't a lot, I must say. Okay. Is that of interest to anyone? I'll volunteer since I was, I'm your delegate to the Maine School Board Association. Thank you, Mr. Greer. Mr. Greer will now be our school board contact person. All right. Um, I believe Mr. Doc, excuse me, Dr. Pelletier has uh, a request for an additional teaching time in the Gifted and Talented program. Some time ago, I indicated to you that uh, at mid-semester, if our consultative collaborative model uh, that we're using uh, was working, that uh, I'd like to add some time to the teacher and uh, so that we would enable that teacher to at least start working with some of the fifth grade teachers and so we'd have a good start for next year's program. As you can see, this is a small additional cost. It's approximately 4000 
but I think it'll enhance the program significantly. And what my real concern is that it would be an excellent start for next year's K-5 program. Mm -hmm. All right, do I hear any discussion about uh, this request for additional time in the gifted and talented program? Where does that leave us for next year, Daryl? If we, if we add the extra time this year, is it something we plan to add on a full-time basis next year? <coughs> How does uh, this on the elementary level, I'm not sure. However, we are working on the middle school uh, program, and we'll have a recommendation for you in terms of personnel, but that what we'll need there. Also, what kind of program we envision there. And uh, we'll be coming to you with that in February. Uh, and probably we'll be discussing some of that at the workshop, which is at the end of the month. Uh, Wayne, I think uh, we've had enough discussion so that we could sort of share what we think the middle school program would look like next year and what we would need. You see, the personnel needs are being done by the administrators now. And, uh, well, they're all going to have to be part of the budget at some yeah. point. I mean, it's... And uh, I think we pretty much know what, we, what our needs are for personnel. And uh, we will certainly explain it to you that night. Thank you. Uh, I want to understand that, that a vote for this tonight is not a, an endorsement for the program for next year. Is that correct? No, I mean, it is. we're not promising this person that... No. additional fraction of time for next year no. you understand my concern is often you add a position or add a part of a position and then if in fact you have to take it away people are very upset so is that understood that that's understood I, uh, except that if the program is, <coughs> is very beneficial and working at the end of the year we find it's working very well uh, but that's the kind of thing that will be addressed in the workshop coming sure. up so you'll convince us of the importance of that at the gift and talent workshop. Well, you see, the f mere fact that we want to extend it to fifth grade is an indication the superintendent thinks it's really working beautifully. I'm very pleased that I'm here to say, you know, we, we want this person to get in the fifth grade with the teachers. Yeah, we're piloting the program in the fourth grade this year. Yes. And what we're going to look at is if it works well in the fourth grade, we would roll it out into the fifth grade the following year so that we have some continuity for those students who are in the program in fourth grade that to carry it out and we will eventually phase challenge as it's known in the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grades now would be changed in the next five or six years. I'm not wonderful at math, but at some point in time, the new program will have been rolled out. That's the way we're okay. looking at it at this point. Okay. And the old program dispensed with? Eventually. 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 Unless, you know, unless the board feels it, to do otherwise. Well, it would, it would be nice if, in fact, we are making these changes and they are working well, that it not be, if at all possible, increased costs involved with these changes. And I guess that's getting back to Loretta's point, not speaking for her, but if, in fact, what we're going to do for fifth grade is going to require increased cost. Does that mean we're we'll going to come back next year and say, well, as we roll this into the sixth grade, we're going to have increased cost in the sixth grade, and all of a sudden we have a program that we put in that's costing us X percent more than the challenge program was? It begins to look like a special education program. That's right. Well, the only way I, we can look at that is if, as long as we retain challenge, then we have a sort of a double cost. That's right. And as we remove challenge, or if it moves out, then the cost would probably be the same, I'm not sure. See, I'd have, we'd have to watch that. But certainly, if you're, as long as you retain the two, it's going to be additional cost. Now, do you have defined specific needs that cause this to happen at this particular time in that particular grade level? Or is this just a let's let the teachers sort of begin to... Well, I, I think we have uh, the fourth grade people all involved and it seems to be working very nicely. And they're identifying the youngsters. Now, with additional time, I'm hope that they're hopeful there can be some orientation to those fifth grade teachers and probably some identification so that you know we get some feeling that it's a K-5 program and it could be initiated immediately in September. And that couldn't be done as a, as a summer work program? Actually, that's curriculum, isn't it? it that wouldn't be a summer? It, it could be, but it would be, it's, it's far cheaper to do it at this point in time 
right in the school when the kids are there and the teachers. So they and will they be work working with the present. Teacher. Will they be working with the present fifth grade students? Well, let's see. Are they going to be working with the fifth grade teachers? Will they be? Did I, you hear I'm the question? I'm interested in knowing. In terms of the need, as you may remember, <clears throat> when we had talked in uh, both April and May or June, and then in August and October about um, the program and, and the evolving concept, one of the things that was of great concern to us was um, that problem created when you selected out 10 kids and then said all of you others uh, didn't make it. Uh, it, it left them with, um, <coughs> without uh, assistance and it, it uh, left a number of uh, staff and uh, parents with the concern that their youngster ha w um, is pretty capable and um, but we didn't have the resources to address the needs of those capable children there was a, a peripheral group there always is a peripheral group and the concept that we have talked about for a number of months now addresses the expansion of services to that group of children as well as those who have uh, traditionally been identified in the past just and can I ask one question are we talk are we <coughs> are you now saying you're expanding that group because it was my understanding with the fourth grade program and the pilot program that we were going to take the the challenge program or whatever it was we were doing for gifted and talented children and those teaching methods would filter down to the entire class and not just going from 10 to 12 or 10 to 13 students. Yes. That's, that's my and, I'm and that's And that's accurate, John. Okay. That's accurate. Uh, we haven't been able to do that at the fifth grade level as much. And in part, what we would like to do is initiate that now, in part. But um, Claire's work has, because the fourth grade component is a substantially new effort, uh, and she was in a um, three quarters time basis, uh, it has, I look at this more as a K-5 service delivery system than just adding the fifth, because her work has greatly expanded in the fourth grade level. And uh, sh we're beginning to, to uh, look at the needs of the K-3 component in terms of assessment now for the future. And um, as the year progresses, those kids emerge more. And we're unable to serve all of those uh, teachers' needs as much as anything. And so it is in addition to Daryl's point about the fifth grade it is also to begin to focus on what happens as the year presses on uh, K3 or K4. I guess my other question would be are you confident <coughs> enough of what has happened this year in the fourth grade to be able to start to roll that program into the fifth grade or do you think another two or three or four months worth of work? I mean we've asked the teachers in the fourth grade and we've asked you to do a lot this year to mm. establish a new program and pilot it. Yes, we have. Uh, you know, we're now four months or five months into the program and now we're looking at starting to roll out into the fifth grade. Or is that too soon? That, uh, that's a hard question to answer, very frankly. I, I don't think it's too soon. I, um, I feel the need to do it. I, I, and I feel the need to do it because we have a population of children who have needs that aren't being addressed that ought to be. And we need to, we think that we're, as Daryl points out, we're close enough to being at that level of teacher time, Claire's time, to do that and see how that works for the next six months. I want to speak to Loretta's point on that, how that works for the next six months. And it, it will help us, um, we believe, come to some more resolution about the future. The other thing I want to say about your concern, Loretta, is we're going to talk with you um, on the 25th and through the budget process about a concept. And um, it's that concept that we'll bring to the board that we're asking for you to deliberate upon and provide us with a decision about. And so that um, 
what happens with that concept is, is up to the board. We'll present that to you, as we have in the past, of course. Other questions? Okay. So you see Claire's expanded role into the fifth grade as preparing those teachers or working with that kind of peripheral group that's... It's... That's, it, that's it, it's, adjutant to the, to the 10 or 12 that are already being served. In a pullout, yes. Uh, it, it's actually, John, to do both. It's kind of like to get your feet wet and, um, and begin to initiate a process that we're hopeful will um, extend. But again, that's conceptual, and we just think this is an opportune time and not um, burdensomely expensive to do. How much, you know, for me it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not an expense issue to me. I think it's a matter mm -hmm. of principle. And I, I don't know enough about what's happened, and that's the reason for the workshop a week after this, mm -hmm. a week after next, to find out more about what's transpired with, with the fourth grade program, how you see it um, developing in the fifth grade and on, and how, how our gifted and talent program works throughout. If we, if we get hold off, my feeling would be I'm not comfortable in saying let's go ahead and do this in the fifth grade yet, knowing the little that I know. And I'm, it's late, it's quarter after 10. We've been here since quarter after 7 tonight, and I'm not sure we wanted to get into a long mm. discussion about that, and that's the reason that we're having the workshop. I, my feeling would be far more comfortable to make this decision, if that's possible, at the next meeting after we've had a chance to talk to you at workshop. Are the rest of you prepared to vote? Jan? Yeah, I, I almost wonder if maybe the, the fifth grade is a peripheral kind of issue. I, I would think that with all the work that needs to be done K through four, she might need the time. And it would be nice if she could get to, you know, to start with fifth. But I guess I didn't see that as the major <coughs> thrust for why we needed. It's well put, Jen, because it isn't. Um, it is not the major reason. It is a component we'd like to initiate, but we're not looking for the same level of delivery. Uh, it's just that Claire has been spread out pretty thin. And um, in, in part, we need some additional time for her. Well, that's what our backup information says. This is to add to a fifth grade program. Is that right? So that, I mean, we need to understand and it doesn't what it is. It's not expanded upon. Right. This will enable Claire to work with fifth grade teachers so that we will be off to a good start for next year's program. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have two different mm -hmm. needs here. Either we need her in K through four or we, we are using her in a, an expanded fifth grade program and that might have a bearing on on what the, the board mm -hmm. is in favor of. So, if what is it? she's thin now, why expand her role into the fifth grade? I mean, if she's, if she's burdened now with K through four, does it make sense to expand her time in the fifth? I guess I don't understand it enough, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, I've been hesitant to comment on this because I have a fifth grader. Um, but I think that uh, it's a relatively small budget item. And uh, I guess when in doubt, I would go with what the professionals recommend. And uh, if they are indeed unanimous, if, if uh, half got up and said, don't do it, and the other half got up and said, we ought to do it, well, then I guess I would say, well, this is an opportunity for the board to micromanage something we should normally avoid. And those are just my thoughts on that issue. Now, this request is unanimous. It comes from the principal, the director, the assistant principal. Michael's been in on it. If anybody disagrees, now is your time. We did not the other day. Yes, Michael. Be, being more peripherally involved with uh, uh, gifted and talented. When we, when we staffed uh, this program at the beginning of the year um, to implement uh, this kind of model at the fourth grade, we really made a guess as to, what sta as to what kind of staffing a program like this would need at the fourth grade level. And I think we knew that uh, as 
our consultant began to make contacts uh, with teachers and as teachers began to learn better how to use the consultant, that the demands on her time were going to increase. Um, that's happened. Uh, if it had, if if it hasn't been happening, then then I'd say you know it would be an indication that the program wasn't working, because it has been happening and it's also been happening K three, that there's greater greater and greater demands on her time. I think is an indication that that teachers are beginning to learn and use the consultant well, and that's begun happening at fourth grade and at K three, and she's pretty strung out. Uh, my sense of this proposal that it was, was that it was really responding, trying to get more accurate the staffing that, was always, that we always expected was going to be needed as the year progressed if the program was going to work. What we're finding now is that we don't have enough of her to meet the demands that are coming from the classrooms, K-4. And that's exactly what we hoped was going to happen at the beginning of the year and it's happened. But that's so, not what this is, you're asking for. Well, that's, I don't know what it says there, but, but my impression has always been it's really that, that, that increased demand on, on this person's time that we were hoping would happen in September has really happened. And this really is delivery of the K-4 program. That's, that was my impression. I'm not sure what you have in front of you. Just one little point, and that was last year when we were going over this, I remember clearly I believe it was you, Wayne. I don't remember who, but I remember clearly people getting up and saying, Wayne Dorr will be involved, Michael Efron will be involved, Nancy Hutton will be involved, Barbara Powers will be involved. You, you named seven people that were going to be very involved in the success of this program. And, and I hope that has been true, because it now seems to be that Claire is the one that is overworked. Uh, I don't know if you, I, I'll leave that as an open-ended question, but that was, I think, probably one of the pivotal things that was said that, that brought this somewhat hesitant board to vote for this new program, which was there is a, a strong unit of people who are very actively involved in seeing that this program is successful. And if that means getting more people to do the work, I'm not sure that that's what I had in mind for the program. You might consider that. Well, I, I don't know how involved you all have been. I mean, I know you have a lot of other things to do too. I, I didn't know how it could happen. I don't know how you could be that involved, and I and I, I don't know if you have been. I, I can only say that we have been. We've met. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I think it's working, is that uh, not only that, uh, we've been very generous with staff development. We're bringing the university in to help train the teachers. They're getting extremely sensitive. Uh, the fact that she's uh, being pushed is exactly what we wanted. If she wasn't being pushed, I'd say, let's not add a thing to it. But that, I have a feeling that that's why it's working. She's being stretched, and I have no objection to that. I think that's wonderful. I would just hope that she can stretch a little more and get to the fifth grade. Uh, some of the fifth graders and some of the fifth grade teachers because they're sort of out in limbo while the K-4 is doing this and she's right there living with them. Why are they out in limbo? Well, she isn't dealing with that, you see, at this point. And she could be, very easily. Well, we have I, them into the training as well. I understand that, but we haven't, we haven't had a session to find out how we're doing in the fourth grade or how we're doing in K through three and now we're going to take somebody who's an integral part of this program and say, well, we're going to throw some additional of her time on fifth grade to get fifth grade ready. To get ready for what? We haven't said that fourth grade is going to go into fifth. We're going to take the fourth grade pro program and roll that into the fifth grade yet. Well, perhaps we're making that assumption. You see, I think we've been a lot closer to the program than you have. Right. And, and you know, uh, we're jumping with joy. The superintendent's very enthusiastic about the way this is going. I think you can see that. And I think this is the way to go. And, you know, the faster we go, the more we're going to meet the needs of a large number, a larger number of kids. 
Let's hear with the principal to, who lives with. I, I sat here in November. I think that's when we reported out and said that we would come back and speak to you about some time and look at extending, extending into fifth grade. And I don't remember right. that causing consternation at that point. Um, things happen fast in our work. Claire is is very busy. Everybody's very busy. I don't want you to think she's close to not being able to handle this because she is. The fact of the matter is. Um, a professional like Claire has put in above and beyond her three quarters time at this point too. I think I think to an extent this is simply recognition of the fact that she's giving 110 percent effort to try to make this work. Um, a piece of what we're dealing with in the intermediate school that feels very, it, it's a little uncomfortable to us this year is the enormous difference in how we're dealing with our populations in the fourth and fifth grade. A, a piece of what we were hoping to do with the remainder of this year is start to make some inroads. Uh, a, a, a couple of months of Claire's time of this year was really spent just building relationships with fourth grade teachers. In a consultation role, it's, it's really very dependent on a trust relationship. So the teachers are comfortable with having her in their rooms, they're comfortable talking about kids, and, sh and they were virtual strangers to her. We wanted to be able, and I remember clearly now saying this, to hit the ground running in September, if it is indeed the model you choose to endorse for fifth grade for next year. And on the 25th, we need to make some really important decisions together when we plan to be very uh, candid with you about where we see our progress in the fourth grade, what our vision might be for fifth. Um, but it is staff intense. It's a staff intense. It's serving more children. Therefore, it's going to be more staff intense. It's more efficient um, money use to pull children out for an hour a day. There's no question. And we'd like to speak with you a little bit on the 25th about what those trade-offs are so you can really s help us set some priorities about how you'd like us to deal with that population. But I sat here before you in November and said this is what we would probably come back to you with at the semester change. And I feel very strongly it'd be a recognition of her efforts and also the ability post-January 25th to proceed with some pre-work in the fifth grade. Okay. Who's going to be at the workshop? Will the teachers themselves be at that workshop? Uh, yes, to, and, and, and... All the teachers, and all the fourth grade teachers. All the fourth grade teachers. Um, <laughs> we can speak to them. I was trying to be sure all of the resource teachers were there. Loretta, your very notion of is Claire in this thing alone? No, she's, she's uh, particularly in terms of direct service uh, and closeness to children supported by the curriculum resource people. We're asking them to join us to present and, and I can see if, if some of the fourth grade team would be willing to join us in that discussion too, maybe a fifth grade team representative. I guess my concern is, is it, we're talking about being candid, is she mm -hmm. being utilized in all the fourth mm -hmm. grade classes mm -hmm. because there's a, there's a, the whole issue of acceptance. That's right. You, know, you can give people innovative, wonderful programs, and if they choose not to use them, then all the students. That's right. And lose we can out. tell you about that with some candor. And um, and I would have never predicted there would be even innocent acceptance with any new program, and there hasn't been. Um, okay. And that's a piece of what we can talk about. Okay. So then I would say, in clarification of this we would be voting on this because she no, she is not a three-quarters time teacher. She's teaching full-time and should be paid in accordance. Is that correct? No, she is on the salary schedule. She's a three-quarter time. Right, and, and this I'm would asking, make her a full-time teacher. I'm asking you to make her full-time. Because you're saying that she's working those if kind she, of hours already. She's doing 110 now. I'd expect her to be doing 130 for the rest of the year. So it doesn't go, it, it isn't into expanding the program as much as it's into to paying her for services already rendered and continuing to be rendered. And at the same time, I would hope that she would look to expanding this in the fifth grade. Work with the fifth grade teachers, start identifying kids. It would be an orientation. Is that clear to It anyone? certainly isn't going to hurt the fifth grade. And if we're providing for more youngsters in K-4, then why we should be doing the same thing in fifth grade as soon as we can. <coughs> That's my feeling. I'm having a problem of where her focus is going to be. Right now I hear that she's 110% <coughs> for what she has to cover, and then we're asking her to give 150% if we expand her to full time and take on the fifth grade. So I'm having some problems of, of where her role is going to be. Why, is, why are her hours being expanded? Don't the fourth and fifth grades uh, try and 
is it an effort to try and get them to, to work together to make that a, a, a unit that flows more easily, or is that what you're saying? Is that what Daryl's saying? Well, it's a K-5 unit, <laughs> and, and we're providing a consultative, collaborative model for K-4. Now, the fifth grade teachers are there, and fifth grade students are there, and it's only natural that if she's around, that she starts to deal with them. But I think what, what we're all saying is we're hearing that K through four isn't getting what they need, that, that they are not getting all of what they need, that, that she is stretched enough that that isn't happening. And so what I think I'm hearing the other board members say is that how can you expand her even more if K through four is not being <coughs> Claire is not getting everything they need. Claire and I discussed this, and, and, and in November, it was easy for her to say, sure, at full time, with that extra day, um, I think I could really do some, some serious service with fifth grade. The decision was put off. She's gotten even more involved with fourth. Her primary focus is coordination efforts and identification of services K-3 and direct delivery in fourth grade. There's no question. Um, I, I say that some of this would be in recognition of the fact that she's, that she's already giving umpty 9%. I'm not going to sit here and tell you she's on site 45 hours because she's not. But she does put in planning time in excess of three quarters time. She would be willing to make some initial efforts in fifth grade. It would not be a, a heavy time consumer for her. Um, the teachers are very open to doing some initial work with her, but I would not expect that to be a significant focus. And I would say, based on a movie I saw not too long ago, seize the moment. That sounds like the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the bus. I'm not sure. yeah. <laughs> Daryl, I think you're. I think you're one of. You haven't convinced me that this is the moment to seize it because I'm not sure what you're going to do with it. And it has. Not, I think Claire is wonderful. I think she handles her programs well. I'm not sitting here nitpicking over the four thousand dollars and I'll shut mm -hmm. up. But I don't think that the case has been made in my mind that we need to expand Claire to full time to, to go into fifth grade at this point. I, I don't see it. And it, you ought to vote accordingly. <laughs> is this workshop all going to address the sixth, seventh, and eighth and what is coming down? I mean. It's a K-12 workshop. Okay. Because this is going to impact, if we start mm -hmm. at mid-year working with fifth grade, what happens to mm -hmm. those fifth grade students that go into sixth grade and we still learn pull up? There's a, there's a series of philosophical and, and procedural commitments we need to talk about. You see, and preliminarily, we, we've talked about that in our discussions. We know pretty much what Chris wants to do and what we think we ought to do, and we are going to present much of that to you. Anybody else want to comment? Well, mentioning yet again uh, the fact that I'm a parent <coughs> of a uh, a fifth grader and that I do believe as several of you have said that there are fifth graders who's who are not being served the people who represent uh, the administration are unanimous in this program uh, and I think frankly it's an exaggerated case of micromanaging to uh, at the late hour uh, in a school board meeting to question a rather minor expenditure for a short period of time Are we prepared to vote? All right, do I hear a motion that we increase um, Claire Rutenberg's position to full time? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Motion passes four to one. All right, I've lost my agenda sheet. <laughs> I'm not sure that's it, but go ahead. We now have consideration of a request by the superintendent to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations. Before we do that, I'd like to announce that the next school board meeting will be on February 13th at 7.30. Now do I hear a motion that we enter executive session for the purpose of discussing Second. negotiations? Second. All in favor? All opposed? <laughs> meeting. Like the meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Stay right here. Yeah. 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 Madam Chairman, we can do this right here if people okay. want. Um, it's not going to be that long.